everyone. Welcome to the Burn Brass Homestead channel. I am going to play a speech that is about a year old, but it is so powerful and important. This is just a snippet of the speech. It resonates with me because some of what Joe Salatin uh, talks about were personal experiences in for us. Although we are not 100% independent of the system, decisions made at the homestead puts us in a position to be far less affected by food shortages seen in the last couple years, um, inflation, weather anomalies, and you know blackouts. In this video, Joe Salton talks about local food as uh, parallel agriculture. Can you imagine half of the people in your block, road, or area growing food locally or raising animals on a small scale to provide food just for that community. How fresh, nutri uh, nutritionally dense, healthy, cost effective, and efficient would that be? Not relying on harsh chemical fertilizers that eventually deteriorate the land, but local natural fertilizer. I will post a link to the full speech in the description, but just listen to this. This spring, when Russia invaded Ukraine, fertilizer prices increased in some cases 400% and global grain shipments sputtered. Our farm didn't feel anything because we don't buy fertilizer and we don't buy foreign grain. Suddenly, our years of being marginalized by the agri-industrial complex inverted and interest in our methods and madness exploded. Both farmers and non-farmers began asking how do we disentangle from the system? Just in time, the darling inventory phrase of recent decades changed to just in case, as supply lines fractured. Culturally, a society detached from menial life tasks like farm chores and kitchen duties suddenly found itself vulnerable to unforeseen fragilities. The food and farming sector goal switched from efficiency to resiliency. In the spring of 2020, as COVID's black swan permeated the world, store shelves went bare. Farmers euthanized. That means they killed and threw away. Millions of chickens, turkeys, and hogs because mega processing plants couldn't maintain operations. At our house, we neither worried nor feared because we had freezers full of meat and a basement full of canned garden produce. I don't say all this proudly. I, I say it gratefully and as a challenge to everyone, freedom comes from participation. We've spent a couple of generations exiting historically normal tasks and behavior from integrating livestock and crops, growing gardens, buying locally, and cultivating domestic culinary arts. We even abandoned breastfeeding for a couple of decades. We thought squeezable cheese and subcontracting kitchen duties to mega corporate entities, replacing decomposition with chemical fertilizer, honey with refined sugar, and butter with hydrogenated vegetable oil would launch us into a new freedom nirvana. But instead, it shackled us, enslaved us to nefarious scientists bringing us fertilizer and menus from laboratories instead of from God's ecological womb. Those of us who continued to participate in historically normal farm chores, garden production, local or biologically grown sustenance, and domestic culinary arts are today enjoying more independence and freedom. You cannot have freedom without participation. Here are two questions to ponder. First, would America's food system have convulsed as violently if instead of 300 mega processing facilities employing 5,000 people apiece, we funneled our food through 300,000 community-scale 20 to 50 employee facilities. The second question is, when rocky disruptions affect our ship of state, would you rather navigate dangerous shoals in a maneuverable speedboat or an aircraft carrier that takes 10 miles to turn around? Let's examine what a food and farming parallel universe would look like by juxtaposing current objectives with the lunatic fringe alternative. I've got 10 of these. Number one, cheap food versus precious food. If one thing defines American agriculture, it is dedication to cheap food. American per capita expenditure on food is the lowest in the world. Our per capita expenditure on health care is the highest. Cheap food promised to give us spendable cash to attend football games and casinos and cruises and movies. 
It created a love affair with concentrated animal feeding operations, CAFOs, that became incubators for disease. Floating on a sea of cheap energy, these facilities promised mechanized farming and pharmaceutical health. Subtherapeutic antibiotic use created a world of superbugs like MRSA and C. diff. A brand new lexicon burst on the American vocabulary. Campylobacter, Listeria, E. coli, Salmonella, food allergies, type 2 diabetes. These are nature beaten and abused on its knees, pleading and begging, enough! Instead of God's designed decomposition driving fertility, petroleum-based chemical fertilizers substituted like an intravenous feeding tube replacing edible food. In short, our agriculture system created a dead zone the size of Rhode Island in the Gulf of Mexico, infertile frogs, and three-legged salamanders. And now our life expectancy is dropping. We're addicted to pharmaceuticals. Physical and emotional maladies plague our nation. Perhaps cheap food policy's most damaging effect is on farmers themselves. The primary custodians of our natural resources, not to mention food, feel marginalized and unappreciated. When's the last time you heard with a, a school guidance counselor advising, Mary, you're really sharp with great grades and honors credentials. You should be a farmer. Burdened with the unnecessary and ridiculous responsibility of feeding the world, American farmers now number fewer than our prison population. It gives me pause to realize that my book, You Can Farm, would have had a much bigger buyer interest if it had been you could be a successful inmate. <laughs> Stewarding our air, soil, and water with our best and brightest will only come when we have a precious food policy. That's up to consumers, not farmers. Can you imagine a cheap religion policy, a cheap road building policy, a cheap information technology policy? Dear folks, you cannot abdicate precious food respect without serious consequences. As a culture, we must leave this cheap food universe and get in the escape pod of precious food.